My name is Priyanka and I'll soon be a first year internal medicine resident here in the USA. In today's video, I'll be talking all about USCE, also known as US Clinical Experience. So, without any further delay, let's jump in. From my understanding, there are three major types of US Clinical Experience that you can gain. Number one is the clerkship or electives. Number two is externship. Number three, observership. What are electives? Now, simply put, electives are nothing but part of your medical education or medical rotation that you choose to do here in a hospital in the United States. If you are chosen to do an elective here in the United States, during that time period, you'll pretty much have the same opportunities as any US medical student would have. So pretty much, you can take the history of the patient, perform PE on the patient, do case presentation, attend all the hospital conferences, and you can also familiarize yourself with the electronic medical records. This is by far the best way to earn hands-on US clinical experience. Now, if you're applying for an elective, then give yourself ample amount of time because the whole application process takes quite a good amount of time. Most of the electives usually last for four weeks and when you apply for this, you have to pay a certain amount of money as well. And that could range from $500 to $3,000 or higher. If you are applying for an elective, it is good to know what the requirements are. Most of the programs require that you submit a USMLE Step 1 score with it. While some programs might require you to take TOEFL exam, which basically tests your proficiency in English. Whereas, some programs might not require anything. The requirement for an elective depends on the program that you're applying to. It varies from one program to another program. One of the most important features of an elective is that you apply for an elective when you are still in medical school or prior to your graduation from your medical school. As I mentioned earlier, electives are the best way to earn hands-on use clinical experience. But on the flip side of it, it is also the most expensive kind of experience you can gain. Not everyone has a financial means to achieve US clinical experience in the form of an elective. Or you might have already graduated from medical school. So what can you do to expose yourself to US healthcare system? And that leads me to talking about externships. Externships are somewhere between your observership and your electives. If you work at a private clinic or at a hospital as an extern, you might be allowed to take the history of a patient, perform a PE on a patient, update their electronic medical records. And therefore, externships can be counted as hands-on experience. But it is completely up to the discretion of the program if they allow you to do so. Externships can truly be an amazing learning experience for anyone who does it. And of course, you can also gather great letter of recommendations from this particular experience. However, most hospitals will not allow this. Simply because there are many liabilities associated with having an outsider or letting an outsider have access to patients' information. There are many private clinics with large patient volume that need extra help and they will provide international medical graduates an opportunity to deal directly with patients. Therefore, even if you have an opportunity to work at a private clinic, accept it as a learning experience. I understand that people have different opinions in this particular matter. I have heard a lot of people say that letter of recommendations received from private clinics are worthless. However, I completely disagree with that. A physician is a physician regardless of the place where he or she practices. And I truly believe that when it comes down to residency applications, to have something on your resume is always better than to not have it on your resume. Meaning, a private clinic letter of recommendation is still better than not having a letter of recommendation at all. As long as your mentors describe your true personality and the exact type of work you did at the clinic, I don't see why the programs would disregard the LOR just because it's coming from the private setting. Although externships might not pay you, you will still be dealing with a lot of people. You will have your colleagues, you will have to deal with patients, and it will definitely help you improve your communication skill along with getting a letter of recommendation. Now, 
The next way to achieve some US clinical experience is observership. Observership is exactly what it says. You observe somebody. Some people also call it shadowing. When you are an observer, you pretty much do not do anything. You just tag along a physician and you observe what he or she does throughout the day. It is mostly passive learning, but learning nonetheless. It all depends on how you showcase your learnings. For instance, imagine somebody asking you, did you do an observership? And your answer to that is, yes, I shadowed Dr. X, period. That's not too appealing, is it? Now, imagine again, somebody asking you, did you shadow Dr. X? And your answer this time is, yes, I did shadow Dr. X in May. While I was working with Dr. X, I came across a patient who was not taking medications on time and when we dug deeper, we found out that the patient's socioeconomic condition was so poor that he wasn't able to afford his medication and that was stopping him from being compliant with his medications. Dr. X referred the patient to social service. The whole scenario made me realize the importance of proper history taking. Did you notice the difference between the two answers? I will repeat it one more time. It is completely up to you how you use your experience to your advantage. I'm not suggesting that you sugarcoat things or make stuff up. I'm simply recommending that every time you work with somebody, every time you shadow or observe somebody, go home and reflect on the day. Try to jot down two or three things that you learned in that particular day. When you are jotting down those things, you will realize that you've learned something new that you did not know before. And these are the things that you will talk about during your interview in an organized fashion. Now, let's talk about how you can obtain these positions. Well, I have already mentioned how you can um, achieve an elective. You just need to go online and check what universities provide with an opportunity to do an elective in that university and you just have to plan accordingly. What about externships? How do you get them? Once again, make Google your best friend. I'm also going to try and put the name of some programs that offer such opportunities down in the description below. Make this an active process. Do not be afraid to approach or to email programs. I think there are also some organizations that help you land these positions. I personally didn't use any of these services, so I cannot speak much about them. How about observerships? I think this probably is one of the easiest way to achieve US clinical experience for most of the IMGs. Do not be afraid to approach a physician and ask them if you can tag along. Of course, do it in a very respectful manner. The worst case scenario is the person you approached might say no, but hey, you approached, you tried, now you can move on and ask somebody else. Some really good programs do have paid observership positions as well. Some hospitals might not have a direct observership program for international medical graduates. But this is something that you can try. Most of the hospitals have a volunteering program. You can sign up for one of those volunteering positions initially to begin with. While working as a volunteer, you can also make connection with some of the physicians and ask them if you can tag along. Residency match application is a tedious journey and you have to prepare mentally to hear a lot of no's. But do not let that disappoint you. Because very soon a huge welcome to the program will follow that. It is only a matter of time when all of your dreams will start coming true. So be patient, do not be afraid to hear no's and keep trying, keep approaching people keep emailing programs. I really hope that you guys got something out of this video today. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll try to make more videos in the future. By the way, I'm also learning to use Instagram. You can follow me at Medicine is Love MD. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Bye!